in my hand and have had in my possession for the past 34 years a part of the intermittent mechanism of the first machine which projected pictures on the screen with an intermittent movement. It has figured in quite a number of patent cases uh, and I value it highly for its historic interest. It is, as you see, a very crude and entirely impractical apparatus compared with the elaborate and perfect machines of today. But it did its work, nevertheless, sufficiently well to base a very broad claim for patent. This piece of mechanism consists of an Edison kinetoscope sprocket mounted upon a mutilated gear. It was exceedingly noisy and never exhibited outside of my office in the summer of 1895. Following this machine, I devised another apparatus uh, two of which I have before me, the one that I have my hand on now was the first one made, followed by this one, which was substantially like the first one, but heavier and more substantially built. Uh, after I had built this machine and was satisfied with its working, I found it necessary to secure a supply of films. The only available films at that date were Edison kinetoscope films and it became necessary for me to make some arrangement with the Edison Company to secure a supply of these films. Uh, I got in touch with Messrs. Raff and Gammon in the month of December 1895, and Raff and Gammon were the agents for the Edison Kinetoscope. And I invited Mr. Gammon to come over to Washington and see my projecting machine. Mr. Gammon was exceedingly skeptical and delayed coming until I finally offered to pay all of his expenses. He finally came over. I found him a very agreeable gentleman and a typical promoter. Very handsomely dressed, tall silk hat and long Prince Albert coat with quite a considerable of what we call front. He was still very skeptical about the machine, but uh, I invited him down to the basement of my office where I had the machine in operation. And as soon as he saw it, I saw by his expression that he was delighted with the results. Uh, we then began to negotiate for some sort of a contract by means of which I could secure Edison Films and he could secure a model of this machine. Subsequent to that, I was invited over to New York, or rather over to Orange, New Jersey, to give an exhibition for Mr. Edison's benefit and for the purpose of inducing him to make the machines. This reminds me of an amusing experience. I was uh, impressed with the way both Mrs. Gammon and Raff dressed, and I felt it was more or less incumbent upon me to dress in a somewhat similar way. A uh, short time before this, I had been an usher, or first or best man, at a country wedding, and I, for that occasion, supplied myself with a silk hat and a long Prince Albert coat. I dusted off the silk hat and took out the Prince Albert coat and dressed myself up in these things before I went over to see Mr. Edison and give the exhibition. It must have been a rather funny sight, I think. Mr. Edison came down to the foundry where we were giving the exhibition, dressed in a suit of clothes that looked to me as if it might have cost $4.95, and all the rest of us were dressed up in these tall silk hats and long Prince Albert coats. It was a funny scene, I imagine. The exhibition I have just referred to occurred in the foundry of the Edison Manufacturing Company in the month of January or February, 1896. As a result of this exhibition and interview, Mr. Edison agreed to make 80 machines for the use of Messrs. Raff and Gammon and myself, and he also agreed to supply the necessary films for use on these machines. 80 machines at that date seemed to be a large order. Subsequent to this, I gave the first exhibition ever given in a theater at Costin Beale's Theater on 14th Street in the city of New York in the month of April, 1896. Looking back to that date, it seems almost unbelievable that the palaces that are now devoted to moving picture exhibitions should have sprung up in the short period of 33 or 4